Okay, hello everybody, it's Dr. Smith. I'm getting ready to talk about something concerning what I posted on Facebook and I'm gonna wait, go on and invite your followers. So I'm gonna wait and get completely set here. Here we go. Now we're set up to invite your followers. I want you to invite your followers while I turn my volume down. Okay, invite your followers here. And I am set. Okay. All right, invite your followers. I'm just gonna wait just for a moment here and we're gonna get started. I'm wearing my shirt my daughter's uh, gave me, Active Minds, U of M. She's graduating this week on Sunday and I'm excited about that for her to complete uh, and accomplish what she has accomplished. We're gonna invite your followers, those that are, uh, you may be at work and stuff like that and what we'll do, I understand the time of the day. So what we'll do is go on and begin to teach you then you can go back and do a replay. But when you do your replay, make sure that you invite your followers, invite all of your followers to your replay and then do those hearts and that'll be great. Now, what I want you to do, uh, I want you to, and, I, and I, I think I appreciate, you know, some of the family being here and them being quiet in the background, stuff like that. Uh, what I want you to do is go to my Facebook page and I posted some notes there on the Hebrew word for repent. I posted some notes for the Hebrew word repent, and that's what I'm gonna talk about, keys of revelation, actually the Hebrew alphabet. I'm gonna show you how you can take those Hebrew alphabet and unlock keys of truth in the word of God that's there for us. I always preface when I teach uh, in this area, and this teaching really is for those students of the Bible, you know, pastors, leaders, uh, teachers, anybody that haven't came into the knowledge of these particular keys, uh, that will help unlock revelations in the word of God and help validate meaning of scripture without depending on flesh and blood per se. Okay, so remember in Revelation, uh, I appreciate it if you wouldn't turn that water on whoever it is. In Revelation, uh, we got uh, Revelation 1 and 8, Revelation 21, Revelation 22, Isaiah. You'll see all those notes on that page that I posted on Facebook. You'll see those notes where Yeshua, uh, Jesus said, I am the olive and the top. He never said, I am the alpha and omega. Uh, those are not, those are Greek letters. That was a transliteration. He said, I'm the olive and the top. Of course, I need to let you know this before we get into this, just to preface it. Uh, olive top is all throughout the scriptures, all throughout the scriptures, even in the first book uh, of the scripture, the uh, Bereshit, the, in the beginning, uh, in Genesis, what we call Genesis, that first book, it says, in the beginning, God Elohim created the olive and the top. So I want you to understand that uh, in the beginning, uh, Yeshua was letting us know that he was the first of creation. It actually reads in the Hebrew, uh, Barashi Bara Elohim Et. Barashi Bara Elohim Olive Top. In the beginning, Elohim created Olive Top. Now, those are the words, the Hebrew letter words that spell Hebrew words. See, in the Hebrew language, words are spelled with other words, and we call them the Hebrew alphabet. So with that being said, I want to deal with this word repent, and you'll get more of it. You hear me say Yeshua, because Jesus Christ actually come from Jesus Christus, which is a Latin translation of Yeshua HaMashiach. So the ink translators took the Latin uh, translation and translated his name from the Latin and not from the Hebrew. So his name is still the same, Yeshua, uh, the Messiah. All right. So let's look at the word repent. And if you, you can go on it, like I said, if you got that page up, you'll be able to see it. If you don't, you can go to our Facebook and look at that page. So the word repent is spelled Shin Vav Bet. Shin Vav Bet. Okay. Let's look at what each letter means so we can extract this truth behind the word meaning for repent and we'll get more of an understanding that is more happens and is more that we can do uh, in terms of change or turning how what actually happened there's power so much power in repentance that need to be unlocked that help us live victorious and successful uh, a life of faith so shin and the pictorial language is a picture of a tooth. Now, what do you do with your tooth? You crush 
and prepare food for consumption. Anything that go in the mouth is actually destroyed from its original form and content. It's crushed and it's, it's prepared to ingest, to go in the digestive system so it can be consumed. So shen means to consume or to destroy. Uh, it's significant in the spelling of the Hebrew word for fire, aleph, shen, and aleph represent the father. It means uh, teacher, it means the first, it means the strong leader uh, as in terms of a father. And you, you spell fire, aleph, shen. So fire is significant in the meaning of shen because fire also what? It destroys, it consumes everything. And our God, Elohim, is a consuming fire. So we want to understand it also means guardian, protector. You remember the pillar of fire uh, by day and the pillar of cloud by night, both had fire in them, significant of the Father's presence to guard uh, the nation of Israel as they was on their way out and being delivered. So shin means consume or destroy. And then the second letter that spells repent it's Vav. Vav in the pictorial language is a picture of a nail. You remember the nail was nailed in his hand, Yeshua's hand. Uh, the uh, hand, the pictograph of Ham is the letter. It comes from the letter Yud. And that's the first letter to spell the name of God. But let's stick with this. So uh, Vav means to secure, connect, or establish. Something is established, it's connected. It'll hold something together. You build a house, you're going to take nails, a wood house, and connect everything together and it's going to hold it in place. So Vav means connect, secure, establish. We're talking about the Hebrew word for repent. You pronounce it shuv and it's translated to turn. Okay, repent or to turn. Then the final one in repent is bet. That's a bet or bed. That's the second letter of the Hebrew olive bet. And it means it's a pictorial. The picture there is a picture of a house and a house denotes Famine that's inside the house. Famine reside inside of the house. So bet means what's inside the family or what's inside the people in the family. That's what uh, bet means. Picture of a house, but it means family or what's inside. What's inside the family? What's inside the individual? What's inside a community? What's inside a nation? You know, that's what is denoting. And of course, also bet you'll get Yeshua out of it because he is the the primary person that brought us into the family of God. Okay, so now we have shin, va, bet, shu, that's the word for repent. So let's take these keys of revelation and, and get what meaning uh, that we have not been seen, seeing out of that, not using the keys of revelation. But we're going to use the keys of revelation as a simple application. I'm going to show you how to do it right now. So shin, va, bet, Repent or return mean to destroy, to destroy or totally consume what's connected on the inside of me. What's connected, Bob, bet on the inside of me, you know, whatever it is that I need to be free from, it needs to be destroyed. We can't turn from anything outwardly until whatever it is that's holding me on the inside inwardly until that's destroyed then there is no repentance there is no turning now here's a, a great example of this and what would happen and here's the uh what the con content you got a context and you got a content here's a con contentual if you let me say the word meaning here whereas in the culture of the scriptures you know during that particular time and that's what we call revelation accommodated where we have to apply the time, the culture, what it meant to them, what they heard when they heard it in order to get the proper meaning. When they would go in and capture a village, capture a town, when they would go in war and capture a nation, what they would do is that they would bound them up, and there's Bob, connect or establish, bound them up, and turn them to, they, to their houses, which had been captured by the enemy, whoever went in to do it, and they would burn their houses down and make them stand there bound up and watch their houses, uh, their legacy, everything that they had worked for, you know, because we store our memorials there. We have different things in there. Okay, uh, sound, you can't hear me good? Uh, 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 let me do a check here. Uh, Pastor Nate, can you hear me good? If you do, just, just let me know because someone just said something about sound. 
Okay, so what they would do would make them watch. Is it there? The sound is good? Great. They would make them watch. Okay, great. They would make them watch those houses. Just think about it. Just like when a storm come or something like that. If your house catch on fire, burn everything down. You're hurt because some things that cannot, sentimental things that cannot be replaced. They will make them watch that be destroyed. What they was established to, what they, what they was connected to on the inside, you know, uh, they would burn it down and they would watch that. And what they would do, they would place in their minds that I can never go back there again. So in my mind, I have to turn. I have to turn. You see it? Repent, turn. I'm going to turn away from it because there's nothing that's there. I can't connect myself to it on the inside. The memories may be there, but eventually I'm going to have to deal with that in order to move on. So that's what, that's the word repent or shuv in the Hebrew using the keys of revelation. Uh, these keys that God has given us all that we need to really apply and understand and learn about it. So repent means to turn. So you see how they turn. And when they would turn, they would turn going under the authority and rulership of another kingdom. Okay. So when we repent, we turn, first we have to destroy it, let it burn, whatever's connected, that inside, the inside. See, a man is tempted by his own desires. That's right. Y'all continue to, if you're on, go and invite your followers. If you just call us, invite your followers. And during the replay, also invite them. You see, so uh, when you look at, uh, to uh, when you deal with or burn down or consume what's on the inside, what's inside, then you can turn away from no outward actions and outward deeds that's, that's going on. You know, a lot of people confess, say, Lord, forgive me, I repent and go right back to it. That's because what's on the inside that's got you bound, that's established on the inside, it never was destroyed, never was, you know, uh, consumed. All right, so repent, shuv. Again, those just coming on, go to the uh, Facebook page and we got the notes on, on there where you can look at these uh, Hebrew letter words, those are the keys of revelation that we're using to even understand repent. So I encourage you to actually, the fire is in the word of God. Let the fire of the Holy Spirit, the fire of the word of God in that area. So that bondage, that thing that's got you, uh, got me or whoever, that's connected on the inside, destroy it with no mindset of going back there, no sentimental feelings, no soul ties or soul ties. You can apply this word with soul ties. Once you burn it and destroy it on the inside, there's nothing to go back to. Then we can turn and and receive the full blessing of the kingdom of God. See, we're under, we're under God's dominion, but when we get things on the inside of us, you know, that, that has established itself and set up on the inside that's not in the will of God, then that moves us away from the kingdom blessing. Let me put it like that. Because we, 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 the rain is falling, but we got an umbrella up that's preventing the rain from hitting me and I'm not receiving what I should receive and walking in what I should be walking in because I have unrepented, uh, willful things that I'm doing. And even if I'm not willing to do it, Something is working against my will because I still gave it permission because it's still established and connected on the inside. So even with bondage uh, and even with things, you know, working against us, you know, we still have to remember that we have a will. And the minute we decide on the inside, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm turning away from it. I'm destroying it in me. And that's a personal, that's a personal thing that all of us have to do. We can come before people and make confessions as a result of what happened on the inside of me. So even, you know, we gather and we pray when we have worship and the spirit and power of God hit and, and people begin to repent and come in for prayer. That's done after something happened on the inside. So I encourage you that this is the way to be get completely set free. And even when you're teaching on repentance, you can use these keys, uh, these Hebrew letter word meaning within those words in the Hebrew and it'll bear out and give you the story behind what's actually going on and you can walk in more victory. Okay, that's, that's that one word, repent, and I post it and what I'm going to be doing, I post a word, a keyword, and then I have the notes. We'll post it on our Facebook page 
on the uh, Empowerment of Faith as well as my personal page. We'll post it there and then we do the Periscope. You can hear the teaching, but you also can see the visuals. You can see these letters and you'll know exactly how to begin to use them in your own study. I suggest you get uh, Hebrew Word Pictures by Frank Seekin. It's a great book and uh, in his own words by the late Grant uh, uh, Newton, I believe. I'll get his correct name, but he have a great one. I have those two books. The Holy Spirit did the rest of it. So we don't study from a, a Hebrew or Jewish Kabbalahism. Kabbalahism, I think that's what we pronounce. We don't, the Kabbalist Jews, we don't use the mysticals and all that stuff. The word will bear it out. And remember now, uh, Yeshua said, I am. Actually, he said, Haya, the same name that uh, he revealed himself to Moshe Moses in Exodus 3. When he said, I am that I am, he said, Ahaya, Asher, Ahaya. Well, he said the same thing in Matthew, Ahaya. He said the same thing, Ahaya, I am. And in Revelation, he said, I am Ahaya Allah Tav. He was telling them that Allah Tav in Genesis 1 and 1 and all through the scripture that they didn't understand that's me. And he revealed who he was. So that's very powerful. Uh, of course, we're going to have some classes uh, coming up where we can get pastors together and whoever want to uh, learn about these keys of revelation. And uh, it'll help you in your studies. God bless you. Appreciate you so much. Don't forget to invite followers when you go on and watch this replay. And we'll post it on Facebook also. Uh, I bless you in the name of the Lord. Amen. Appreciate you.